creating and modifying geometry in the sculpt environment. In the previous lesson, we talked about the basics of T-spline geometry and how we can translate, rotate, and scale faces, edges, and vertices. Now we're going to continue creating and modifying geometry in the sculpt environment. Let's start to develop a quick concept model for the back of the reciprocating saw. In Fusion 360, we have several ways that we can create geometry. We can start with primitives and modify them to capture form, or we can start with 2D profiles and extrude, revolve, sweep, or loft them into T-spline bodies. I'm going to start by creating the housing around the motor of the reciprocating saw, and to do that, I'm going to use the face command. The face command in the sculpt environment allows me to create T-spline faces that we can use to build from or to fill in surface faces. I'm going to create a four-sided face on the origin plane of my model, roughly mimicking the area that covers the motor and aligned to the lines of my sketch. Hopefully you're starting to get familiar with the edit form tool after creating the handle. We're going to use the edit form tool to move this new face into location, allowing for some tolerance from the motor of the saw. Move the face using edit form 35 millimeters off of the origin plane. So far we've used the edit form tool to modify geometry, but holding alt on a PC or option on a Mac will add a modifier to extrude another face from a selection of faces or edges. While selecting the edge of the face we created, hold alt and drag out another set of faces to create the transition faces that wrap around the motor. You can see how easy it is to create geometry using this technique in Fusion 360. Depending on where the geometry was created, I also might need to use edit form and window select the back two faces to better match my concept sketch. Using the same technique, use alt and drag to add another set of transition faces on the bottom of the geometry and manipulate the faces to closely resemble the concept sketch we imported earlier. Now it's time to build the transition between the two T-spline bodies we've built so far. In the Modify menu, select Bridge. Bridge will build the transition faces between open edges or faces in Fusion 360, as long as the input edges are the same or multiples of one another. In other words, you can bridge two edges into four edges, but not two edges into three edges. Even though I can bridge the two faces of the cylinder to a single face on the other side, a best practice would be to maintain an even topology of faces wherever possible. Subdividing the faces around the motor will maintain an even face loop around the handle. To subdivide, we will use the Insert Edge command in the Modify menu. Insert Edge will subdivide a face or faces based on an insert location you select graphically or through the dialog box. The insert location is a ratio or fraction of the overall face size. 0.5 or 50% will divide the selected face in half. Once you subdivide the faces, Use Bridge in the Modify menu to build the transition faces. Select the two edges on both bodies, and notice that you can view a preview of the faces in Fusion, as well as control the transition faces you would like to build between them. With the new faces created, I will now modify the geometry using Edit Form to better align with my concept. With the bottom edge, I can either align all of the vertices to my concept sketch, but instead I will overbuild this bottom set of faces, allowing me to use the surface trim tools in the patch environment later to create a clean edge for the saw to sit on the table.
Now let's move to the top of the saw and build the transitions for around the trigger. Using the same techniques as before, I'm going to hold Alt and add another set of faces. And I'll scale and rotate them to modify them into position. After adding three transition faces, I'll continue to use Edit Form to modify the feature line on the top edge to match my, my concept sketch. I'll also edit the feature line on the inside near the trigger. You can see that the leading edge of these faces is not straight, and being mindful of your edges is certainly a best practice. One technique that helps maintain a clean topology of your T-spline edges is to scale the edge to zero, which will flatten the edge to an axis. You can see by scaling this edge to a larger value, it will exaggerate the angle of the edge, and scaling it to zero will flatten it out. Now it's time to build another transition. Earlier in this exercise, we used the bridge command to build in transition faces, but let's try another approach. First, I'm going to use Alt-Drag to add a set of faces for my transition. You can see that these two sides are not connected to one another. To fix that, in the Modify menu, select Weld Vertices. Weld Vertices will allow you to explicitly connect two vertices together by either moving a vertex to another vertex, moving two vertices to a midpoint, averaging out their distance, or by welding them together within a tolerance. You'll notice when welding these together, your design will temporarily display in box mode. Box mode in the sculpt environment is a great way to understand the topology of your design and to modify and refine your T-splines. Fusion will display in box mode often when it cannot compute the smooth representation of a design. Once you weld the second set of vertices together, it will switch back into smooth mode. Now, let's continue to build the rest of the saw. Repeating the techniques from earlier, use Edit Form, Hold Alt, and drag out additional faces on the top of the saw. I've chosen to add three faces so that the topology lines up well with the three faces surrounding the motor. You can see that when I stitch these faces together, I'll maintain an even topology of faces through the saw. There are multiple tools and techniques that I might use to close up this geometry. I could weld vertices, but let's use another modification tool called Merge Edge. Merge Edge allows me to select the three faces on one side of the saw and merge them into a single edge with the three edges of the other. You can see that Fusion 360 quickly heals and solves the geometry. In a few short minutes, we have a concept model of the side of the reciprocating saw, and now it's time to create the opposite side. I want to use mirror symmetry to create the right side of the saw, but before I do that, I want to make sure that the edges and vertices are all on the center origin plane of my model to ensure that the T-spline body will weld together properly. To do that, I'm going to pre-select the parting edges down the middle of the saw, and in the Modify menu, select Flatten. Pre-selecting the edges prior to entering the Flatten tool will automatically grab all of the vertices on the edges. Otherwise, you can select them all individually or make use of selection filters and window select. You can flatten vertices one of three ways. You can flatten them all to fit, which will flatten them relative to their current position. You can flatten them all to a selected plane or you can flatten them parallel to a selected plane. In this example, I want the edges on the origin, so I will select the plane option and hit OK. You can see that the edges on the inside of the handle move to the origin plane and will now give me the best result when I add symmetry. Symmetry in the Sculpt workspace offers a ton of speed and control when creating T-spline bodies. Internal symmetry will allow you to make one 
side of the body symmetrical to the other. But in this case, I want to duplicate the saw and mirror while maintaining that one side is identical to the other. Choose Mirror Duplicate Symmetry, select the saw body, and then locate the origin plane and select it as a mirror plane. The result will give you a right side and a left side of the reciprocating saw and a green edge that denotes a line of symmetry. Making changes to one side of the saw will automatically change the other. In this exercise, we use several methods of creating and modifying T-splines to quickly capture a conceptual form of the reciprocating saw.